Konami is reprinting Retro Pack 1. We've reprinted everything at this point. What's up, guys? We are back with a uh, non-expected video. Today, we already have a video out, so make sure you guys go check that out. We opened a bunch of vintage packs. A lot of you guys haven't seen it because we posted a Pokemon video yesterday and nobody watched that because, you know, it's Pokemon. I get it. But then the next video usually doesn't do so good. So go check out today's video, which is like literally old school awesome stuff. So don't miss that one. But also sound like I can't talk because I just woke up. So I just woke up to this news, which now I have to post a video about this because, I mean, this is just insane. I mean, after the Light of Destruction thing, I guess I'm not that surprised but they are supposedly according to distros which is where we got the info about light of destruction that's where everybody got the uh speculation oh they're reprinting light of destruction it was because of a distribution thing same thing for this they're apparently reprinting retro pack one retro pack one is a set that is extremely rare it was never printed uh what well, wasn't sent to the u.s so it was like a european release or whatever they later had retro pack two which had the blue eye shining dragon and everything but retro pack one is so much rarer i have tried to get a full box of this for many years and I've never been able to do it. They hardly exist at this point. So in that aspect, it kind of makes sense to reprint something that literally doesn't exist anymore. It does suck for the people that have this item, whether it's a mini box, whether it's the cards, they are reprinting this. I'm I'm surprised, I'm very surprised, but at the same time, I'm like, Light of Destruction just got reprinted. What's next? Like literally anything could get reprinted. Geeky Corner posted these uh, images on Instagram so you guys can check him out if you want. Uh, I think he got them from uh, Mcole40's video that he just posted. So they both have talked about it a little bit. So the first one we have, this is the thumbnail, I guess, from uh, Mcole40. So we don't really need this one. That's just his thumbnail. Here we go, Retro Pack Box English. So this is, I guess, the distro email. There's a picture of what the mini box is gonna look like, which I think this is basically what Retro Pack looks like, except Retro Pack was vertical. It was kind of shaped like this. So they basically made it a mini box like Ghost from the Past 2, but instead of being vertical, it's more like long ways, which is kind of how we do it most of the time in North America versus in Europe, they like to do the vertical style. I don't know why they do that, but it is easier to differentiate, so that kind of makes sense. This one doesn't matter as much. Here we go, Retro Pack, the Lost Booster set was never released in North America, yeah. Now, as a part of our ongoing anniversary celebration, you can finally hit this missing hole in your collection. I don't know how I feel about that. You can finally hit this missing hole in your collection with the reprint. It's not really the original, but you have the reprint. I guess, I guess if you're just collecting cards like one of every card and you don't care about first dead or whatever, there's no first dead in Retro Pack 1, by the way, which is why this is kind of a big deal. If it's reprinting like a lot of destruction, sure, the unlimited gets hurt, whatever. There's no first dead in Retro Pack 1. It's just unlimited. I don't know why they did that. They printed it as an unlimited set, kind of like with Dark Legends and other stuff, probably because it was like a reprint. Did they do? I guess they did that for Dark Revelation. So basically when they started, all the reprint sets with like not new cards, I think they were unlimited. I think Dark Revelation was like that. Dark Beginning was like that. So they didn't have first dead. So that just was their style, I guess, because like these aren't new cards, so they're not first edition. I kind of wish they still did it like that. The only problem is now when you get 16 years later, because this was released back in 2008, you reprint it and now it's, you know, you have to figure out the difference between the Unlim and the original print, which honestly, okay, we'll, we'll keep going. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm not sure. I still not sure how I feel about fill the missing hole. It's like, well, does it really count? It's a reprint. Um, I guess it does. It just depends on how you're collecting, right? I mean, if you're collecting any version of the card, it's fair. It's not going to fill the hole in the collection. Let's let's say that. I'm going to fill the hole in the collection. Only released overseas, Retro Pack was a collection of vintage cards from the earliest days of the game made to catch up other countries with the North American card pool. By the way, I need to I need to mention the current player base is not going to care about this at all. This is just a bunch of like Magic Ruler, LOB, Metal Raiders. Like this is all like bad cards. Like I guess like some of the really powerful ones that people still use, like I guess you can get your common copy of Change of Heart. That's not even that really used that much. It is a like you can use it at one. There are not many cards in here that are going to be useful. Like Light Destruction had like Light Swords and stuff like that in Substitute and stuff. I don't know what we're getting out of Retro Pack 1 that players are going to care about. Maybe there are some goat cards or something. I guess we're going to get a reprint of the fabled scapegoat from Go Format. That's actually kind of insane. I didn't think about that. Sangan from Retro Pack 1. I mean, all this stuff is like, yeah, <laughs> the Retro Pack Red Eyes Black Dragon. Isn't that a rare? No, it's an ultra rare. Okay. So look, as you can see, it's just a bunch of classic cards. Like nothing here is, I mean, cloning, card destruction. Nothing is really that interesting when it comes to right now. Graceful Charity. I mean, I guess we're gonna have more access to old school cards for like Goat and maybe Edison, like stuff like Heavy Storm can make it in there, but a lot of it's not really Edison style because it's so old. Like it came out 
right before Edison, but it was just reprinting all the, like at the time of this, these cards were all old. 2008, all these cards from 2002 were super old, so they're reprinting them. The fun part is we will get to search for Exodia. That's kind of exciting. I'm not seeing anything really though. I guess Upstart, that's a common though. There's a million Upstarts out there, so that doesn't mean anything. Uh, Anything that is gonna be relevant. I don't think so. Honestly, I yeah, we got through all the secret supers. Yeah, there's really nothing that I'm seeing that's gonna be relevant to really anybody in terms of like playability. So this reprint is really geared toward me and like you guys who are just opening packs because it's fun and you like seeing the old school cards. Basically like the Legendary Collection 25th Anniversary reprint. That's basically what this is. It's just a different version. It's going to be super fun to open, but I don't think the players are really going to be excited about it. If you are a player and, and I'm missing something about that, let me know in the comments or if I'm right, go ahead and let me know. All right, yeah, so I made a catch up other countries in North American card pool. That actually didn't really realize that, that that was catching up like Europe and stuff like that to cards that we had a lot of in North America, but other people didn't. But since it was never released here, these exact cards can be hard to find until now. Yeah, but does it count? Like Konami, it doesn't count. It's a reprint, okay? Like it counts, but it doesn't count. Like there's a, there's a difference here. So it's like, yeah, you now have Retro Pack 1, but they're 16 years later. Like it's kind of... It's kind of different, you know? And unlike the booster set reprints, oh, what? They're re they're referencing them. That kicked off anniversary last July. Retro pack will be as retro as we can make it. Okay, what does that mean? The original card frames and card look and the original card names and text. This is good and bad for a lot of reasons. If they had not done this in the original card text or card frames, it would have been the stupidest thing ever. You're reprinting a bunch of old school cards that people only want to open because they're old school and they're like the reprint of the original you know because there's no there's nothing playable about them and then you put them in the new playable way it wouldn't make sense so it's it definitely was the right decision to not do that the only problem is now we have to differentiate the originals from the new ones i don't think it's going to be that hard but it is not going to be as easy as it was with the 25th anniversary versus the original unlimiteds of all those cards because like that was like you you didn't even have to look at them you're like that's a completely different card now it's gonna at least look similar so you're gonna have to kind of look at them for someone like me or old school players or old school people that have been around for a long time it's gonna be not a big deal but if you're like someone newer that's opening it up or maybe you're getting back into it or you realize you had a collection and you're looking back and pricing stuff you might not notice go on tcg player look up your card and then you look up the reprint version you think your card's worth 20 bucks is really worth like 400 or whatever so that might really be dangerous for the newer people or people that don't really pay that much attention so that's kind of weird i don't necessarily love that part of it because and really because the first dad doesn't exist that's what really screws us up let's keep going it's a time capsule from the past all the way down to the special limited edition labeling on the blue eyes ultimate dragon oh i didn't even think about that reprint the promo, the promo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. That's pretty cool because that was a really cool promo. I do have a PSA 10 of that, so that's probably going to be uh, interesting to see what happens with that. There's one little change to the set you'll probably like, though. The drop rates for four cards are double that of the original version. Do we need that? There's no collector rares. There's no ultimate rares. There's no ghost rares. There's nothing high rarity in here. Do we need double drop rates? I feel weird about that. It's kind of what they did with the 25th anniversary. They made it so you get a secret basically every box. Like you can get eight foils. Like it's just weird. Like it's not the same experience as opening old school. You want it to feel like the same experience, but it's easier to pull for twice as easy. Like that's a lot. Like that's saying like, instead of getting like six or seven in a booster box in original, you get 12 or 14. Like that's way different. I don't know about that because it's, there's already not that many foils in the set i guess it's i guess i mean if it's just for the opening experience i don't know i'm not sure if i like it or not will it be more fun i don't know i'm not sure maybe you're opening up and you want to keep pulling foils and it feels good to do that but then it's just kind of just becomes i pulled a foil pulled a foil i don't know i'm not sure yet i'm i'm kind of in the middle on that let me know in the comments how do you feel do you like doubling pull rates or do you think it's kind of weird and it doesn't fit the vibe of this? I'm, I'm leaning toward doesn't fit the vibe of the reprint with the original card text and everything and stuff like that. Plus, it's like old school. I don't know. I'm leaning toward that, but I'm not sure yet. The complete retro back booster set is 101 cards, 48 commons, 24 rares, 10 supers, 8 ultras, 11 secrets. So the total number of high rarity cards is 29 cards. If you're pulling them twice as often, let's say you get 12 a box like every other every other pack. You're gonna, it's going to take two or three boxes to have the full set, which in a way could be cool. It's like pretty easy to collect the whole set. It doesn't really fit the vibe, though, of Retro Pack 1. Super rare set. Very hard to get the cards. In this set, not rare. Very easy to get the cards. So I don't I don't know how I feel about that. Overall, 
I, it's it's still even with the light of destruction thing i should have expected more i mean i was really expecting phantom darkness next not retro pack one i didn't even think about retro pack one this is weird this is super weird is this going to affect the original prices probably it just depends on it's just like the original unlims and current thing it's not just like it but it's a little different because the original on limbs also had a first ed so it was like it didn't matter as much because the first eds were safe now it's like there's one original print and there's one new print there's not like eight prints in between so if you can tell the difference you're not going to sell your card for the price of a reprint but a lot of a lot of people won't bother to tell the difference with the reprints and they'll just price them super low and then it might drag like if, if tcg player doesn't separate these they'll have like if they just have a retro pack one prices and they put them all together that will drag the price down in theory but it doesn't really drag the price down because if you know the card is an old school card you're not going to sell it for that tcg player market price because you know that that's just been dragged down by a bunch of reprints if they separate them and say retro pack one reprint in one and you can list in that one and then you have retro pack one just normal then the price will probably stay around the same and i'm really only talking about tcg player but that can really affect things because with the originals versus the unlimb 25th anniversary so for a long time in 2017 on tcg player you would have the original on limbs the 2010 reprints 2017 reprints all in the same like section so if you're a seller you'd list them all in the same spot and you really couldn't tell the difference but in the 25th anniversary they made a whole separate listing so if you're listing like heavy storm it would say heavy storm 25th anniversary and you just clicked on that that made those their whole own thing and then that kept the kind of the price the same over here because these cards were completely different so if they do that it's really going to be two different things if they put them together, TCG player is going to be an absolute mess. And you're not going to know what you're getting when you buy a retro pack one. You might get an original. You might not. Most likely, everybody who has an original up will just like put their price super high or they'll remove it and just post it on eBay or something because then they can say original or maybe they'll put it on there with original and pictures and stuff. It's just going to be interesting because the people that don't know the difference and maybe come back into the game and have retro pack one cards, they might get fooled by that and see like, oh, it's $20 and it's really worth more. And they might end up selling it for super cheap. So uh, that sucks for them, but it could be an opportunity for people like they see like a super cheap price they just buy it ended up getting a steal on it because it's an original so it's kind of weird it's overall just a very strange situation i'm excited because this is going to be some good openings for me like light destruction is going to be awesome this is going to be super fun uh content and stuff like that and i know people are going to enjoy opening retro pack one i just don't know how i feel about them just walking through and just reprinting a bunch of stuff because it feels like at this point nothing is safe in Yu-Gi-Oh. because i mean starlights are not safe obviously we've reprinted a ton of those in a quarter century secret rares so basically nothing new is safe now we're hitting stuff like like live destruction think stuff like retro pack one we're going all the way back to 2008 we've already reprinted a bunch of the old sets i mean i figure at some point we're gonna get phantom darkness we're gonna get magician's force at this point i thought those were impossible but now with what we're seeing here i really expect anything to happen because 25th anniversary is apparently gonna last until the 30th anniversary that's what people were saying last time when i was complaining about this like it's probably just gonna last the 30th anniversary like they did in the ocg from 20 to 25 or whatever it was so it's likely we just keep getting reprints the good side of this is it's gonna drive a lot of excitement. I mean, having all these new reprints and, cause it's just news. I mean, news for Yu-Gi-Oh is great. It's cool stuff coming out. I just don't know how relevant this reprint is. It's definitely for the old school people. So that's cool. I appreciate that. Uh, I think the players are gonna be like, why? We don't need this. Like give us Trident Dragion. Like, <laughs> like where, where is it? Why are we getting retro pack one instead? You know, even though Trident Dragion we did see is in a 10, but four months from now. So they weren't exactly excited about that. So that's about, that's about all I have to say. I'm sure there's a lot more you could say. Just say it in the comments. I'm always conflicted on these on these news. Like, should I be excited or should I not? Well, excitement is really not the thing. I'm excited about it. Should I be happy about it is the question. I'm going to be excited whether I'm happy or not, to be honest. It's kind of a weird thing. So yeah, uh, make sure if you have missed today's video, go check it out. Or the other today's video. We have a massive old school opening, which didn't have any retro pack involved. We also have whatnot tonight at 5 p.m. So if you're seeing this before 5 p.m. Central or at 5 p.m. Central, or maybe a little bit after we're opening first ed magic ruler. Even if they re they've reprinted that a million times, still first edition. So we're going to be giving away stuff like a Blue Eyes Tune Dragon, Secret Rare, etc. So go check that stream out if you guys haven't already. It's live on. It's going to be on Whatnot only. So make sure you guys are there and go check out today's video. Uh, we opened some really cool stuff. Shout out to Tone Foe Show, Anessa Deanda, America Deutscher, KK Beats, Brandon Cheney, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Robert F, Changalang, Adelso Garcia Jr., and Edwin K. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.